Welcome to the Tonight Show. We're excited to have you, and uh, we're we're just excited. We're getting some new software. We're getting some new training. So you just bear with us. We're gonna have some great shows. We're having a great show already. The last show on Tuesday with my new crew, just amazing. And tonight's show with Sherry Kagi. Wow, the beautiful Sherry Kagi is with us on on an interview. I've interviewed her, I think, twice already, maybe three times. And then we did we did the interview at the NRB as well. And I tell you, uh, that woman is tall. I'm about six foot. She's about six one, and then you put some heels on her. She's six foot two, six foot three. So I'm looking up to her. Glad we're sitting down. But uh, other than that, it's it's a great interview. You're gonna enjoy it. And just looking at the things that she's done, and she's written a, a record, and she'll tell you about it. It's, it's called So I Can Tell. On the second segment or the last segment of the show, we're gonna have a teaching. Hopefully, we get it all in. It's gonna be talking about daring to believe. We're gonna talk about how, no matter where you're at in life. You have to believe. You have to trust God. You have to believe that God is going to do what he's going to do for you. We'll be right back with Sherry Kagi. Welcome back to the NRB special show that we're doing. And we have someone that I talked to just a few weeks ago, That's maybe right. a month ago, was it? Yeah. Ms. Sherry Kagi, how are you? I'm good. Good to be back. I tell you what, th this beautiful woman is just a fireball for God, and she's doing great things. And we're going we're gonna to get into what she likes to do and what she's feeling in her heart. But first, I want everybody just to, to know just a little bit about yourself. Mm -hmm. About myself. Well, I'm a lowly. <laughs> I was born and raised in Southern California, um, and I love Jesus with all my heart and um, uh, seek to serve and you know i just recently wrote a mission statement in you fact, did and it okay. would be a good exercise here for me to recite it do it you know because i've been in ministry for like 20 some years and someone recently asked me on the phone well can you send us your your mission statement and i realized i didn't have one <laughs> 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 so i i took some thought and prayer into that and here's the here see if i can remember it says by god's grace and equipping it is my life's joy and privilege to know Christ and to make him known, um, to minister his message of hope and healing through song, speech, and service, and to compel others to do the same for the glory of God. So, Amen. That's a, that? That, that's a good one. Uh, that's the longest is that one on your on website? I, I think it's on I'll there somewhere I'll have to go now. cut and paste it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I it's think I would have changed it. My mission statement. That that's sounds right. better. Insert yours here. Yeah, that, that's... That's that's that good. about covers it. And that it? that covers who you are and stuff. Mm -hmm. That covers. Now tell yeah. us how you got started in the music industry. Well, I um, I started taking piano lessons at a young age. I was seven years old, learning to play the piano, and then God uh, God put me on staff at a church in California where I was the worship leader, and there is where I wrote a lot of my first songs okay. that, that we would sing together as a church family, and then um, then I ended up recording my first record back in '94. All right, and, uh, and the rest is history. So, so it was it was natural for you to be in front of the singing and everything once you um, got started, or was it well, hard I, for you? Well, I uh, you know there was a time where it was hard for me to even sing and play the piano at the same time because I was I was always the accompanist you okay. know, growing up I would play for the singers in the talent show right. or play for the soloist at church and um, but so eventually I just grew in in those giftings and God did did grow me to a place okay. where I could write and sing and play at all at the same time so <laughs> amen well we got a new album correct yes and it's called so I can so I can tell so I can See tell that? that's a good shot let me get the paper away <laughs> so I can tell no we'll fix it in post we'll have the the album cover pop up while we're Very talking good. That sounds good. <laughs> and tell us about this how did this come to existence um, uh, just a lot of life lived um, to birth this this album. Um, I, you know, I went through a really hard season um, okay. in 2010, and um, that was just a lot of loss and change and upheaval and change in my circumstance. It was my my uh, daughter's graduate, my, my daughter's high school graduation, my son's wedding, my grandmother passed away, then my grandfather passed away two months later. I had to sell, do a short sale on a home that we lived in uh, okay. for a dozen years or so, and in all of that too, my 22-year marriage to my high school sweetheart was ending in divorce. So after getting through all of that, um, God then gave the directive to begin writing songs again. Wow. After a season, after sort of a dry season yeah, where I yeah, wasn't definitely. writing, 
And these are the songs that were birthed out of that, you know, out of that journey of pain and loss, but also just God healing me. You know, okay. as I would sit at the piano and by myself in my living room and, and pour out these songs, he was, it was like therapy, you know, for yeah, me with definitely. the Lord. And he was um, healing me and now is using it to encourage others. So Now, did you feel like singing at that time? Um, you know, there's times... There's certainly been times where I didn't feel like singing, but that I've chosen to do it and that okay. God has shown up. You know, I think like if, sometimes when I had a pastor who used to say, if you supply the motion, God will supply the emotion. Okay. You know, so sometimes we don't feel like whatever yeah. it is that, you know, but if we'll just step out and, and do the thing out of obedience, um, God fills in and God shows up and, and, and that's it. That's what he's done. He's been faithful. Amen. I'm <laughs> sure there was a lot of questions in your heart at that time and a lot of wondering what's going on. Mm -hmm. and. Is there any particular song in there that just means more to you than the rest of them, or they all mean the same? Oh, they all mean something <laughs> for sure. Um, you know, well, the title cut is a good place to start because um, because the, the you know the hook line is "I have heard the truth, so I can tell." Amen. And basically, God um, God really showed up mightily in my circumstances and just you know provided for me, uh, brought brothers and sisters from the body of Christ to help sort of carry me along through my crisis, and um, and He I mean just showed up in miraculous ways, Amen. in God sized ways. And so I feel like when you when He's brought you through something, you're just naturally com compelled sure. to tell about it, and that's what the song is. I have heard the truth, so I can tell, not keep it to myself. Amen. Um, and that's what this album is it's just telling people god is good and whatever you're facing um he he can bring you through amen and then there's definitely people out there that have gone through a hard time what could you tell them to encourage them as they're going through a trial maybe yeah. similar maybe not similar but something that they're going through mm -hmm. um oh how can i speak to encourage you you know they're um you know, I did a, a study a while back about um, where we were we were supposed to fill in what were our biggest fears. You know, and I know for me, I um, I've faced a lot of fear of uncertainty, fear of the unknown, oh, fear of what my yeah, future that, would be. That could be very. Very daunting, very just yes. suffocating in a way, yes. absorbing your life and just yes. trying to wonder what's going to go mm -hmm. on next. Right, and um, but perfect love casts out fear. Amen. You know, we know from Scripture, and so I know that when I'm dealing in in a, in a fear realm, in a fear response, that I need to get a fresh revelation of God's love for me because He He's He's where my security is ultimately. Amen. And so um, I've sort of learned that trick, if you will, as a believer, that when I'm feeling fearful, that um, that I need to. I need to get in the Word. I need to. I need to get re-anchored with the Father, and then, and then His perfect love casts out all fears. Amen. Now your last name's Kagi, so I'm sure everybody's wondering now. Are you Phil Kagi's daughter? Are you Phil Kagi's niece? Tell them. Okay. <laughs> um, to set it straight, uh, most people think uh, Phil Kagi is my dad. I like to say, um, no, my dad plays the accordion. <laughs> he really does. But no, I was married to Phil's nephew. And so, um, so Kegi is my married okay. name. And, um, and now that I have gone through divorce, my, you know, I still go sure. by Sherry Kegi, okay. uh, but he's, you know, still uncle Phil. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And he had an influence on you too, as far as music. Yes, very much. I, I remember, um, learning of his music as a teenager, you okay. know, when I was a teenager and, um, and just admiring his gifting, of course, which is so apparent, but yeah. more so admiring um, his humility, you know, and the way I saw him deal um, with his wife and, you know, with his family relations. Okay. And, and so I've um, really, uh, he's inspired me through the years on many levels and played actually on this record. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, yes. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, how did this album come out? Is different than the other albums that you've done. Was there a different you used Kickstarter or something like that? Yes, yes. Um, I learned. Uh, I, you know, I had all these songs, and then I'm like, God, how? Do, what do I? What's the next step? What do I do? You've given me these songs. How do I go about recording them? Okay. And um, and I learned about a fundraising tech tactic. You know, called Kickstarter, where yeah. you you set a money goal and you put it out to your fans and give them an opportunity to sow a seed. You know, in the yeah. ministry. And then in turn, I send them a signed CD or whatever. And um, so God provided, you know, miraculously, even just for the re recording of this record, which really um, encouraged me because I had I'd gone through a long season without writing much, you know. And yeah. so I think it was like I felt God's wind behind my back, so to That's speak. That's good. You know? That's good. Amen. Um, 
so he's he's been really he's just been faithful on so many levels. Amen. We got about a minute left, but I want you to tell you what is there next for you to accomplish? What are your what are your goals beyond your album now? Oh, thank you. Um, I hope to write a book one day. Okay. And so I'm um, simmering on that and hoping for direction from the Lord on that. Um, but really, just want to spend my life wisely. Spend whatever time God gives me wisely and for him to use me to the extent that he sees fit to use me in the kingdom. You know? Amen. You know, I was looking through my notes and I do have your mission statement right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I That's even circled good. it. So I was going to ask you about it, but you got, you beat I me got, to it. I, just, I don't know, for some reason, and that really, this is the first interview today that that has even, that it See, came up in my and mind. And that's special. That's special. So yeah, this, is, this is your second time with us. So for you right it, here. It's okay. special for Red Media TV. You hear that? <laughs> All right. God bless you. Thank you bless so much. You. Thank bless you so much you. for being a part. That's Miss Sherry Kagey. And you got to get her new CD right here so I can tell. God bless you. I got mine. <laughs> we'll be back with another great guest. Welcome back to the show. I tell you, Sherry Kagey was a great interview. She did some amazing things. In fact, I have a CD right here for you. If we can turn on the desk cam real quick, I'm going to see if we can get this in there. And uh, you're going to enjoy this. Um, there it goes. Oh, we got that right on the number. Perfect. Just leave it there for a second. And the first person that emails me and tells me that Cherry Keggy rocks, you're gonna get this CD. Okay, now, come back to me real quick. I'm gonna show you something. Um, I kinda opened it already, <laughs> but you know it's amazing? There's called wrap. <laughs> we're gonna wrap that up. We're gonna ship it to you. It's not gonna cost you anything. And we just believe that, that you're gonna be blessed. Um, some of the songs, as you told you, so I can tell. You know what? I have a video that actually shows you all the songs on this and why she wrote it. So it's about a seven minute video. Please stay and watch that. It's gonna be amazing. On the segment when we come back from our break, I am gonna teach you on daring to believe. Uh, it is something that we have to do. It's something that is in my heart to teach you is believing that God can do amazing things for you. We'll be right back with Ms. Sherry Kagey's video promo on her new album, So I Can Tell. Right back. I believe that um, through a lot of trial in my life, um, and hardship that we all face that um, that really God has given me some gold um, and when he gives you some gold uh, you have a responsibility to share it and I feel like this is my season of pouring out this gold and that this record so I can tell is that that phrase I have heard the truth so I can tell and now bring encouragement to others I've heard the truth so I can tell May the God uh, Romans 15 13 is uh, really I think of it as a benediction of course it's right out of scripture so I can't take much credit um, but it's uh, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may know and overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and I love um, including scripture in my music because uh, to me it gives it, it it gives it validity it's no it's not just my idea or my whim or what I, how I was feeling that day it is truth it's God's truth and it stands and uh, so that's going to be the album closer Romans 15:13 His love endures forever we walk in him there was a there was a long season where I was in kind of a survival mode. And um, this, this uh, record is the first record that I've recorded um, after, after a divorce from um, marriage to my high school sweetheart. So it's a testimony of God's faithfulness because I did go through a long season of not writing at all uh, because I was just surviving. Um, but then, um, then God prompted me to sit down at the piano once more um, this was, you know, after the divorce and after I'd moved from one house to another and was somewhat exhaling, and so all I had to do was just pour in, pour through my journals and um, see the little notes that I take throughout my life, and um, then then it was just, I don't know what, how you would describe it, just um, one song after another that flowed fairly easily and that's best you know <laughs> when it flows fairly easily so these songs I, I believe these songs are 
Um, I believe this record that, that God with this record that God is poised to bring beauty from ashes. Lugging in the heaviest burden. I went to chapel one night. And if you saw the heart that was hurting, well, it was probably my the inspiration for the song Air, Food, and Water came when I was really at one of my darkest points. I was in this season where I would, didn't know was God going to miraculously heal my marriage. Um, I had believed and hoped and prayed for so long um, that He would. Um, I didn't know would I would I be single you know for the rest of my life for part two of my life I didn't know um, if God would ever uh, bring someone else in my life would I even be open to that when I had only known my husband from when we were early high school uh, I didn't know yet where I was gonna live our house was on the market and uh, there were so many unknowns um, and I was very afraid and overwhelmed and my my daughter was graduating high school my son was getting married my in about a six month period there was the divorce the graduation the wedding my grandmother died and then my grandfather died and I moved and just all these things and it was just like whirling but I, I drug myself into church one night and I had actually skipped that Sunday morning uh, because I was so just heavy and broken but I went that Sunday night and the pastor preached a sermon about the three things we need to survive and I'll never forget um, he talked about air food and God's presence and um, even though I was in the depths of despair that was a turning point for me because I realized as he shared that really I didn't know all these things over here but I knew that I had everything I needed in Christ and that somehow he saw me and that I was going to be okay. And so Air, Food, and Water is this fun little snappy song with a ukulele and a harmonica and all of this. Um, and it's, I think, just an example of how he can truly turn mourning into dancing. I was a part of a women's Bible study on Wednesday mornings this fall and there's a time at the beginning where we gather in our small group tables and we share prayer requests and we pray and then we do our study and um, I remember one week in particular there was a woman who at the very end you know after the designated prayer time at the very end she she spoke up because her heart was heavy that um, she was widowed she had lost her husband very suddenly so she just at the end just just verbalized this prayer request and so I said well let's pray right now and and I remember asking that the God of comfort would come and comfort her and the family um, during this time and uh, so sometime later um, that phrase just turned in my mind oh God of comfort comfort me you know comfort her and that was sort of the inspiration point for the song because there will be one day um, when there will be no more tears to wipe away and again I'm borrowing from scripture so that's the hope of the believer who is suffering we're we're called to participate in the sufferings of Christ um, and the, talks, the song talks about suffering and grief um, but it also talks about um, that it talks about going home, and um, and that thrills me. Mind if we watch? It's only polite to ask, but your favorite restaurants and stores aren't always sticklers for manners. I'm Dr. Katherine Albrecht, and I'll be right back to tell you about secret recording devices that could be hidden in some surprising places. 
Your search engine is watching you, recording all your searches and creating a massive database of your personal information. That's creepy, but it doesn't have to be that way. Startpage.com is the world's most private search engine. Startpage doesn't store your IP address, make a record of your searches, or use tracking cookies. And they're third-party certified. If you don't like Big Brother spying on you, start over with Startpage. Great search results and total privacy. Startpage.com, the world's most private search engine. Think twice before you criticize the food. The restaurant could be listening through a microphone hidden under the table or capturing your opinions through a pinhole camera. When you're in a restaurant, a store, a park, virtually any public place, your behavior and conversations can be up for grabs. It isn't fair, but it can be perfectly legal. The logic says that if people nearby can overhear your conversation or see you scratch an itch, the hidden microphone or camera can do the same thing. While businesses often post signs informing you that these premises are under surveillance, that's not quite the same thing as telling you the potted plant behind your head could be listening to your dinner conversation. I'm Dr. Katherine Albrecht for StartPage.com, the world's most private search engine. Welcome back to the show and I tell you what, Sherry Kagi was a great interview, and like I told you before at the beginning, she's very tall, so I'm grateful that we could sit down and do the interview. Uh, but her heart is so true. She's, she is a good woman of God, and her heart is just wants to help people and, and teach them that even though you've had something happen in your life, a divorce or someone die, or, or maybe you didn't get to the education you needed and stuff, that you are important to God and that God can rebuild the things in your life. I want to continue my teaching, if I could, on daring to believe. On daring to believe, um, it's, it's something that all of us have to have. It's something that we all have to believe in, that God has dreams for us that are going to happen. I heard one guy um, say this one time, and he said, it's okay to dream and not accomplish everything as long as you're pushing yourself forward. And I kind of liked, ah, that's kind of weak. <laughs> that's kind of, I don't like that. You know what? I dream. And because I dream, I believe that God would do something big for me. I believe that God would do things. Like I was sharing on Tuesday's show, that if you were listening to us and you were hearing the broadcast or watching us here, and even on Tuesday's show on the radio, I had a guest, and, and before he came on there, I was telling him about when I started to put this entire studio that you see behind me, we're putting it together. You notice there's some blue walls behind me? And <laughs> I tell you, in 19... I have to see, how old is my, my, young, my youngest son? I think it was in 19, no, 2001. 2001, I tried painting the walls in our garage blue. I was making a TV studio. That's what I was going to do. I had a church there. We're going to make a TV studio there now. I was excited about that. Um, it didn't work out. It didn't work out. It just, it just happened that we, we were, like, putting this together and putting the walls, painting it. I have a picture of it even today. I looked at it the other day when I was looking at all the memoirs of put together our vision. You know, you have to revisit your vision every so often just to update it. And I was looking at this and I'm like, Lord, blue walls. And when I was painting this place, I was like, Lord, I put, it, I put a different color on the wall. My family would tell you as we're painting and stuff, there was, it was a whole different color. I think it was gray maybe, I think. And then it, it turned out that we had painted it again and painted it out. And well, it came out blue after we mixed all the colors and stuff. And I was like, oh, blue walls not blue walls again because I was disappointed the last time I put some walls up and colored them I didn't do anything with it I didn't manage I didn't do anything with it and I was just like Lord you got to help me with this but don't you know that every time you do something and you try it with all your heart you, you shouldn't be ashamed of it let me read your scripture it's in Job if we can pull up our scripture real quick in Job and that's in Job 2 I believe it's Job 2 25 through 27 let me read this to you and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. They shall never, ever be ashamed. They shall never be ashamed. I want you to remember that scripture. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of your Lord your God and that hath dealt wondrous with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Amen and amen. And as you look at that scripture and you have it in your heart, Go ahead and come back to me with the camera, please. And as soon as you put that in and you look at that and you see it in your heart, I tell you this, God has done wondrously with you. He has blessed you. The other day I was teaching and I was talking to some people that you feel satisfied when you preach. When I was in the military, I would always want to go out and preach somewhere. 
and, and I was restless. And I, I delivered the word of God. It was all bottled up in me. It'll reach to somebody. It'll minister to somebody. I felt satisfied. I used to call it a high, but that's probably, probably not the proper thing to say. But you feel satisfied when you preach. You feel satisfied that you touch someone's life. You feel satisfied that people are being blessed. And it's just something that only God can satisfy you with. So when I read that scripture, I think of the satisfaction that he's given me and just bringing the word of God and how wonderful he's dealt with me. And I've learned never to be ashamed. What does that mean? That means don't hang your head down. You know, I started doing a relationship conference. I tell you what, in New York, it was more like a trip to New York instead of a conference. I went out there, did the work. Y'all might remember this on the radio show. And uh, maybe two people showed up the first night and nobody showed up the second night. I put a whole investment into this thing and, and it didn't work out. It didn't work out. I was disappointed. I said, Lord, I must be doing something wrong. And I never other, ever did another conference. But th did I hold my head down? Well, yeah. Did I feel sad? Well, of course. Did I look at the expenses and said, oh, man, I could have I could have paid a whole bunch of other things. But what I did was this. I got over it. In the Bible, it talks about King David. There's a time when he went to go and go into a battle. He went into a battle. When he came back, his entire village was overtaken. Children were taken. Wives were taken. Livestock was taken. Goods were taken. And everybody in that village was so angry with him. You ever get anybody angry that followed you into a battle or followed you into an idea or followed you into a business thing or just followed you around the home to, to believe that what you're doing is what God is telling you to do? And then it didn't work out. Well, David was so depressed. It's okay to get depressed, but don't stay depressed. And he went over there. He looked at the Lord and he just said, Lord, I love you. And you know what he did? He encouraged himself in the Lord. You have to encourage yourself in the Lord. You have to put yourself into it. And you have to say, God, you're the only one that can do this for you. You're the only one to make yourself strong and say, God, I love you. I am totally surrendered to you. So you don't want to be, you don't want to be able to not have something happen in your life because you're disappointed, because you're hanging your head down. God wants to give you good things. Let's turn to our last scripture before we leave. It's in Psalms 1830, and it reads, As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. Amen and amen. I want to tell you this, my friends, that, that when, we, when we trust in God, when we really put our trust in Him, and we really put our faith in Him, He is going to bless us. He is going to take care of us. It's not supposed to be easy every day. I'm going to read you what I wrote, read to some other people last Tuesday night, and this is nothing is a failure as you grow in life, just a pivotal turn in the direction in God's plans. God has a plan for you. And that plan is to prosper, to be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Bless you, my friends, and we'll see you next time on The Midwatch. God bless you. The views and opinions of our guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of this station, this show, or its host.